This is Nate. I'm here with the pit. We're here with Ryan of Miss May I. How's it going, man? What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you again. Yeah. So, uh, this is you guys' first Mayhem Festival. How has it been so far? It was cool. Uh, the weather has been nice. The, it's nice to play outside in Michigan and not have it be like the... We have the exact same weather in, in Ohio usually yeah. during the summer. Very similar climate. It's usually just miserably hot and <laughs> so humid. Dude, summers are awful. We uh, it's they're they're wonderful, but playing an outdoor festival in them is not the. It's got to be real. Hot not the sweaty. easiest thing. And then we come to St. Louis, and then we come here today, and we end up with perfect weather. Yeah, absolutely. It's like 75, yeah. partly cloudy. Yeah. Like it's beautiful, and unlike Warp Tour, where it's always been like 95 degrees. Yeah, yeah. And just excruciatingly hot. Yeah. Um, so speaking of mayhem, uh, you guys just did an album release tour. Um, for Rise of the Lion, doing smaller venues. How has it been, like, in contrast as opposed to those shows? It's cool. The only place we really get to do rooms that small is uh, if, we're, if we're on a big tour over in Europe sometimes, we'll have these off-day shows where we get to pop in and do little shows like that. So, you know, it's down to, like, a lot of the time, maybe only, like, three of those a year. It's cool to do a whole yeah. tour of that. It's probably you. Were at the one in, I was at the one at the Pike Room in Pontiac. It's, a, it's like a no space sort of. It, it's really funny. The room we played that day. I remember we played it with our wrestling bear once in 2009, and like I have my recollection of how small it was compared to how small it really was. Was you know it's crazy. Well, seeing that many people packed into that small of a room. It's insane. Like there was the littlest but biggest circle pit at the same yeah. time. Like in such a small venue that. That circle pit was about the biggest it's gonna get yeah. in there. And like, I'm surprised, like, I'm sure you remembered uh, the lights and everything. I'm surprised they didn't come down yeah, from the Yeah, they actually then. stayed on the ceiling, which was yeah, nice. I was, uh, I was thankful for that. Exactly. The band, the band was thankful that we didn't have to pay for that team. I remember a couple times, Levi was like, oh no, this is gonna this is gonna fall down. Like, yeah. People yeah. were just kicking it, stage diving and they went. They went way better than we expected. We didn't know if, if a lot of the fan base was gonna want to come. Um, to, a, to a show like that, you yeah. know, uh, an environment that hot and sweaty and die hard kind of show. Yeah. All the shows were like that. It was great. Yeah, it was wild. Um, so that was an album release tour for your new album, Rise of the Lion. Um, since it's been released for a couple months right now, how has the reception been for the new album? It's been cool. We we did um, the, the April 29th release was a weird time, you know, it was, we weren't on tour in America. And, and, all, and it did so well the first week, which was crazy. It was number two hard rock charts, I think. We missed the top 20 on Billboard by yeah. one spot. You know, like it was unbelievable. There's always next album, man. Yeah, yeah. Next and album's it, gonna do it. And we're all, the number stuff always is the craziest thing yeah. because it's one thing to to have a whole lot of metalheads coming to your shows, having a great time in the live environment. Yeah. It's another thing for your fan base to be going out and buying CDs. Yeah. Day, at, at, Buying CDs in this day and age, yeah, and it's, it's all di like digital, yeah, and like so even we, illegal downloading. Yeah, like. I guess it was kind of flattering to see all that that kind of success the first week, and then right after that we just hit the road, and yeah. that was in May when we hit Europe, and we were there for for uh, most of uh, most of June. We were there, and then straight into this tour, and it's been great. We're playing a lot of the a lot of the new songs because this particular crowd yeah. is. Uh, how heavy the new ones are. Oh, yeah. It's been good. Like, uh, Hero With No Name. Like, yeah, we just started playing that yesterday. Yeah, I remember you guys played that at the album release show. Yeah. And everyone just went ape shit. It's not man. going anywhere. It's going to be in there for a while. That's after. that's a solid song yeah. for the side, dude. Um, but speaking of, like, doing things in May, uh, you guys were at Rock on the Range. And, um, I was actually there, and you guys drew one of the biggest crowds of the day for the side stage like that. Uh, and with it being kind of like a hometown show, being in Ohio, like, how did you feel about that? It was cool. We, we've only, with the venue that we used to play in Dayton being closed now, the last time we played in our hometown was 2011, maybe. Okay. Um, actually playing in Dayton. Yeah. So Cincinnati has become the go-to city for us, the closest yeah. to home. Um, we've only played there four times. Okay. The whole time we've been touring. Really? So I mean, we did Bogarts twice and we did Warp Tour twice there. But other than that, we just never get the chance to play at home. And all of a sudden, you get Rock on the Range. Yeah. And it was the, it was it, larger. These Mayhem shows are massive, 
it was even bigger than those for us. Like, it was an unreal crowd. I remember I saw like a panorama or like a picture of uh, it was like a GoPro on a drone, and it was up in the air, and the crowd was just never ending, man. Yeah, it was it's absolutely wild. wild. Yeah, it's like, wild. And like you said, a month before we were doing. A, uh, it was about 10 days before. Yeah. We were up It was here. like, I think, May 9th or yeah, something like that. Yeah, we were up like here that. playing at 200 capacity. Yeah. In it's got to be a huge contrast, yeah. man. Um, so, like, speaking of the contrast, like, what do you prefer playing? Like, the more intimate shows, whether it's in a 200-plus venue, like the Pike Room, or something that's more capacity, like 3,000? I, I don't really mind either way as long as, as, long as we are well prepared yeah. for that. We were not as well prepared for that little headlining run in terms of like, we forgot how crazy it was going to be. It was so like, we, you know, with the pedal boards on the front of the stage, the way we had them set up, like, yeah. not thinking that through. Not thinking stage divers are going to be hitting that, your that, pedal board. That's what makes a show hell for you. Because then you're <laughs> just like, shh, like you're playing, you're like, shit. Oh, my tone's off. Yeah, that, so we didn't, we didn't think it through. Yeah. You know, we should have had some rig where they were up out of the way if we would have had everything perfect you know that would have been a perfect show but then the same thing happens when we're playing like a giant stage yeah and mess up. i love outdoors i love uh indoor venues i love small venues as long as we don't suck that day and that's I'm very happy that doesn't really happen every time i've seen you guys you guys <laughs> have been spot on like i remember the first time i saw you guys was with a uh, bullet for a pretty boy silverstein um that was 2011. Yeah, 2011 at the Loft in Lansing. That was yeah. crazy, man. That was the first time I saw you guys, and ever since then, you just said, you just blown up. Um, and speaking of like blown up, it's got to feel like an honor to be playing Mayhem Festival, like, yeah, and even these huge yeah. festivals. You yeah, guys were a download, right? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've been, we played uh, we played about eight festivals with Ben Sevenfold in Europe. Okay. Um, and then immediately came over here. Yeah. Are watching walk out every night. Yeah, man. It's got to feel like such an honor playing yeah. with bands like that. Also, we're on the same stage as fucking Cannibal Corpse. That's wild. Insane. You it's so Cannibal sick. Corpse is... There's really no words. Yeah, like, man. They're the they're, best. They're Cannibal they're the, they're the fucking best. <laughs> they are they're the, they're hard as nails live. Dude, they're, they're so tight. They're wild. Yeah, I love them. Um, so, kind of on a less serious note, um, how is Dale your cat, Ben? The cat is... Probably awesome. He's. A, <laughs> I've got. I've got uh, my girlfriend on tour with me right now. Okay. So we've got a friend taking care of the cat at home. So you got to do some Facetimes. He's with probably him. bored. He's probably bored out. He's like, "Where's Dad Ryan at?" Uh, I've been gone. He probably doesn't remember where I am. I've been gone <laughs> for so long. I'll have to. I'll have to bring him over again. Oh, I'm sure he'll be. He'll be like, "Oh, Dad's home." Like a little yeah, bit. I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> and. Um, named Dale after Dale Earnhardt Jr. Or, well, Dale Earnhardt. Uh, I remember last time we talked to you, you said you needed to get a, another cat named Yeah, Dale Jr. no, it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet, but uh, <laughs> it will. It'll happen? Uh, I think so. It's, we just got to work it out. Uh, I got to be home to choose the cat. True. And buy the cat. You got to be like, this is the one that I want. Yeah, um, sure. So, kind of talking about NASCAR, you been keeping up on it, man? Yeah, man. I, uh... Last weekend was okay. Um, I'll tell you what, the best the best one last week was the was the Indian race. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. Awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm keeping up on it. We're doing the best we can. It's a little tough in the bus. Yeah. You park in the wrong spot. The satellite <laughs> doesn't work. Or there's like. Yeah. So we're doing all right though. We're keeping up with it. BJ and I are uh, stoked about the new chase, so that we can drink a bunch of whiskey and watch NASCAR <laughs> and talk shit to each other. Do you Talking shit, drinking whiskey, and watching NASCAR. You can't get more American than that. That's what I do. You can't go. You can't get more American. That's what I do. Um, well, like speaking of racing, uh, if you guys ever get a free chance, Belle Isle race in Detroit, IndyCar racing. Yeah, I would love to. It's absolutely crazy, man. I went to the uh, to uh, Kentucky Speedway and saw IndyCar race yeah. uh, one time. 
I want to go to the 500, man. The Indy 500? Yeah. That'd be crazy, man. Yeah, I, only, had, I had some homies that went that were posting pictures on Instagram. I was so jealous. You were like, come on, man. Why, didn't, why couldn't I be at that? Yeah. yeah. That's next. You gotta go to the Indy 500. 500. I actually, uh, I was at Talladega, or no, Daytona, when I was in Florida, and we did a tour. They drove us around the whole track. Yeah, it's and sick. When you're on the when you're on the one incline, it's literally a 45 degree angle, and you're like when you're on the outside perimeter, you're like 35 feet in the air. It's yeah. it's crazy to think that the cars are going around it, yeah. man. It's nuts. It's, it's wild. But NASCAR is a, a real sport, guys. NASCAR is a real sport. A real oh, sport. they're turning left. No. There's well, a, yes, they are. Well, they they are turning. They are left. turning. They left. are turning left, but it's not just that. There's and tactic. right sometimes. There's tactic. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Couldn't have put it better, man. New spokesman for the sport. Exactly. Ryan Neff, Nate, new spokesman for NASCAR. We're out.